Welcome back to the Cordis Vacuum Guide and in this video, I'll be comparing the Dyson Omniglide and the Micro 1.5kg, two of Dyson's latest cordless stick vacuums. This video will be a continuation of my previous review of the Dyson Micro and I'll reveal several tests I didn't show in the last video since frankly, I wasn't sure how to present it within its context. But I feel it's apt for this comparison since I'll be comparing two vacuums with the same motor. I've spent many hours testing these vacuums, putting each one through my usual series of tests and I've used both extensively to clean my home. So I think I have a full grasp of the strengths and weaknesses of these products, which I'll share with you guys. There's a lot to unpack so let's get into it. After launching the V15, I wasn't sure what other upgrades Dyson would put in their cordless vacuum lineup since they've gotten bigger and more complex. These two vacuums actually represent a slight detour in my opinion as these are specifically designed for vacuuming hard surfaces. Dyson took out all the fancy features they've put in their full-size lineup and stripped everything down to the bare minimum. The size difference between the Omniglide, Micro, and other Dyson full-size stick vacuums is massive, making it highly appealing for small homeowners like myself. The compact form factor works excellent for vacuuming cramped spaces, especially underneath furniture, where a lot of dust will accumulate. Both vacuums utilize soft roller nozzles, which is one of the more efficient tools for vacuuming hard surfaces. But the similarity ends there. The Dyson Omniglide has the twin roller system with four caster wheels underneath, making it the only stick vacuum I've tested with 360 degree steering. It's been a pleasure to use, especially for vacuuming tight spots, larger vacuums may have trouble fitting. Having two rollers enables it to clean in both directions, and the caster wheel allows for a side-to-side -side movement even underneath furniture, which is a huge plus. The Dyson Micro utilizes a more traditional slim roller attachment found in the V15 without the green LED light. Its 8.2 inch cleaning path is narrower than a full size slim attachment which is excellent for cleaning small spaces. However, it lacks the Omniglide's 360 degree steering so expect the same steering as a full size V series but with a much lighter feel. This is where the light form factor comes into play. The Dyson Micro weighs just 3 pounds and 4.6 ounces with the cleaning nozzle and extension tube. It's the lightest of all Dyson stick vacuums and lighter than the Dyson Omniglide. Handle weight is another pro for the Micro at only 0.85 kilograms or 1.87 pounds, so you'll barely feel it vacuuming floors. The Omniglide's one shape handle is unique and I'm guessing it's a must have feature to accentuate the multi-directional steering. If you've watched the review, I said it was like using a broom with its ability to move from side to side. It's the only stick vacuum with this capability and perhaps the biggest benefit of owning the Omniglide. You could steer it in any direction, not possible with a traditional stick vacuum. The cylindrical body makes it sleeker so it reaches deeper under furniture than the Dyson Micro. Dyson also introduced something I thought they wouldn't in their cordless vacuum lineup, push button switches. I first saw this in the Omniglide which I think is a no brainer since it doesn't have a gun like handle. But seeing it in the Micro is a surprise as it retains the same framework as Dyson's full size stick vacuum. Not having the trigger lessens arm fatigue since it's more relaxed, not having to squeeze anything. The domino effect is a better user experience cleaning above floors, and combined with the compact form factor, the Micro 1.5 kg is the best Dyson handle I've tested in my opinion. It also has a more diverse set of tools for cleaning above floors, like this mini turbo brush, which I like for cleaning upholstery. The US version Micro also gets the light pipe crevice and workshop tool. But the good news is these tools are interchangeable between these variants, except for the dustbin and filter. For instance, you could technically use the omnidirectional tool in the Dyson Micro. I've tried it and it works fine. You could do this if you want to enjoy its 360 degree steering benefits while maintaining the Micro's handheld advantages. Despite the apparent differences in their design, there are a few similarities between the Omniglide and Micro. The first similarity is dustbin volume. Both can hold up to 0.05 gallons or 0.18 liters. Both utilize the hygienic system that pushes dirt downward, but there are variations with the release latch. The Dyson Micro has this trombone type lever that functions like the V-series Dyson stick vacuums where you push it forward. For the Omniglide, there's a slight variation. Instead of a flat lever, Dyson utilizes a button but the functionality is similar where you'll need to push it forward to empty. I feel that this vacuum's hygienic system isn't as effective at pushing debris out compared to a full-size Dyson stick vacuum like the V11. Even with the dustbin pushed forward, dirt still sticks in the middle filter piece and you'll need to detach it for dirt to come off. Both have a fully sealed system that didn't leak during the fog test. Both utilize a one-piece pre and post-motor filter combo 
But as I've said, these are not interchangeable. Both use the same capacity lithium-ion battery rated at 2500 mA. But only the OmniGlide battery is detachable. Dyson Micro users will have to purchase a Torque X screwdriver to unfasten these bolts to replace the battery. I'm not sure why Dyson didn't put a release latch in the Micro since the V15 Detect and V11 Outsize have this feature. And I think Dyson should consider adding it in future releases, so users can extend runtime easily by purchasing extra batteries. Speaking of which, claimed runtime figures are identical at 20 minutes, but the Dyson Micro ran longer in my tests, up to 27 minutes versus the OmniGlide's 23 and a half minutes. The results for the max setting are closer at around 8 minutes and change. Both use the same hyperdemium motor, apparently a new Dyson innovation for their hard floor vacuums. It spins up to 105,000 RPM to create what Dyson calls powerful suction. But how do you define powerful suction? This is where the new test I'm trying to implement comes into play. I did two types of suction test. The first test is direct with the water lift gauge connected to a PVC pipe for some added stability. I drilled a small hole to prevent the vacuum from stalling. Without this release valve, the reading goes haywire. The next test I did was with a Y vacuum gauge, which is typically used for central vacuums, but it's also applicable for other vacuum types like this. And there are two tests, unsealed and sealed. I leave this end open for unsealed tests and cover it with an open palm during the sealed test. Without sounding too technical, the unsealed test represents the working suction of a vacuum. While the sealed test represents the full suction potential, I'll go into detail with these new tests I'm implementing in a separate video since it's outside the scope of this comparison. Compared to other stick vacuums, it's easily at the bottom of the list, but the sealed results are impressive for a vacuum with a small motor. Fortunately for these vacuums, high suction isn't a requirement since it utilizes a highly efficient soft roller attachment. It is helpful for above floor cleaning in handheld mode, where I find it to have enough power even for messes like these, which could come in handy. Airflow results are nearly identical, with the Dyson Micro having slightly more in three of the four tests. But the difference is too small to be considered significant, and it could be margins at play. The airflow results also confirm the identical results of the suction tests. Cleaning performance on hard floors is very close as both vacuums will clean the surface well and made crisp passes in the respective tests. The overall percentages are skewed towards the OmniGlide since it factors in the carpet tests. But factoring only the hard floor tests, the results are very close, so it shouldn't be a deciding factor between the two. But this next point could be. Only the Dyson Micro can clean carpet. I didn't plan on doing a carpet test initially, but the roller didn't stall during the test, so I had to push forward with the experiments, and it did very well for a vacuum without any bristled attachment. I wouldn't recommend it on carpet though, since it will not pick up embedded dirt. But for specific tasks, it can be a handy tool, like vacuuming light area rugs. In comparison, the Dyson OmniGlide is not usable on carpet as the roller stalled with the lack of torque. This could also be a factor why it didn't do as well at picking up hair. It only got 26% with a 5-inch test, with most of it wrapping on the axles. So I didn't bother doing the 7-inch test. It's one drawback of having a twin roller system. The Dyson Micro is better by a mile, picking up 96 and 88% respectively for the 5 and 7-inch tests. So the Micro is the better option if you have to clean lots of hair. But I must give a heads up that hair tends to stick inside a dustbin and it could be messy to dispose. Edge cleaning results are identical as both vacuums were efficient at cleaning this area. Unfortunately, these lightweight stick vacuums are also noisy, reaching the 70 decibel mark even in the default setting. The Dyson Micro is the noisier option overall on both settings. Lastly, we'll look at the size difference. The Dyson Micro is longer by a few inches at 47.5, thanks to the longer extension tube. With the combination of crevice tool, that length will increase further, which may come in handy for particular tasks like vacuuming cobwebs or dust accumulation on the ceiling. Combine that with a more handheld friendly ergonomics, the Dyson Micro would be better for these situations. To conclude this comparison, both vacuums are excellent options for cleaning hard surfaces. Choosing one will boil down to your specific need. The Dyson OmniGlide is better suited for people who prioritize hard floor cleaning over anything else. Its 360 degree steering is a game changing feature in my book for lightweight vacuums and makes this the better option at cleaning tight spaces. Plus this feature translates well underneath furniture, which is a huge priority for me since I have low clearance furniture. The Dyson Micro is an ideal option for folks looking for a versatile and lightweight stick vacuum who'll utilize it as a handheld as much as a floor cleaner. Its lightweight and compact body make it ideal for both configurations. 
and it comes with a prerequisite set of tools for the task. Let me know what you think about these vacuums in the comment section below. Consider giving this video a thumbs up if it's been helpful to you. Subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified for future comparisons like this. Links are in the description for more information. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.